Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to talk about the domain name system. So specifically, we're going to talk about the basic uh, procedure for DNS. And we're also going to talk about how it is laid out on the internet. And finally, to wrap it all up, we're going to do a demo that hopefully um, cements all the points together for you. So here is the basic idea. We have a PC, and one day he's going about his business, and he asks that, hey, hmm, I wonder what the IP of www.example.com is. So he, he's curious, he doesn't know. Well, what he does is he takes that question, and he puts it inside of a DNS query. So this query he makes is a packet, essentially, and it gets sent over a network, so onto the internet. And the query eventually makes, it way, makes its way to a DNS server. And the DNS server says, hey, I know what the IP address of www.example.com is. So he then takes that answer and puts it in a DNS reply and sends it back over the internet to PC1. Then PC1 finally says, aha, now I know what the IP is. So of the www.example.com. And then normally, especially nowadays, he will get both the IPv4 IP address called an A record in DNS, and you will get the IPv6 record, and that's a quad A record. Now, with those addresses, he can then send traffic to that website. But he had to first resolve it with DNS to get its IP address. So this is the main idea of what DNS is. <clears throat> but how does it really work in practice? And that's what we're going to talk about in a second. All right, so this is the DNS name server hierarchy. And this is really how it all works. So I can't really explain why we need a LAN DNS server unless I explain all of this. So um, up at the top here, we're going to go real easy. Five steps. We're going to start at number one. So these are what's known as the root name servers. All you have to remember about the root name servers is they, they only keep track of the servers that... They keep track of the servers that keep track of the TLDs, the top-level domains. I know that sounds confusing. That's why we're going to do a demo. But these root servers, and there, there's I believe there's 13 of them spread all across the world... But um, th this is just a subset of them. I didn't mean to leave any out, but there's only so many I can fit. Um, but they only keep track of the TLD name servers, okay? They don't know anything else, anything more specific. So if you go down one level in DNS, you are at step two of the hierarchy. And these are the top-level domain servers. All right, these top level domain servers they keep track of zones. All right, in DNS, there is zones there's a, a forward zone and a reverse zone. The forward zone is how you resolve from domain from the domain name to an IP address. The reverse zone is how you reverse that and resolve with an IP address, resolve that to a given domain name. Okay. These uh, here are some of the more common TLDs. There's many more now, but they are all, in fact, top-level domains, and they're managed by the root name servers in the same way. So we have com, we have net, we have org. We're all familiar with these. And then these are the IP addresses of them. And I actually took these from the demo we're going to do. That's how I created this. So <clears throat> the zones here... Like, for instance, uh, .org or .com or .net. They all have specific second-level domain servers that manage them. So, like, 
when we go, when we ask about a website that ends in .com, we get directed to a top-level domain server for .com, and then that goes to a second-level domain server. So, for instance, this one here manages example.com. That's the zone for example.com. And what happens is the, the second-level domain servers are constantly being queried by what's called upstream DNS servers. So the upstream servers are like Comcast, if you want a ISP provided one, Google, OpenDNS, Komodo, Level 3. These keep the content fresh, basically, and very fast to access. And um, so, like Google, will, if you look for example.com, it will look at the second level domain, find the IP address of example.com, and it will put it in basically its own zone file, so to speak, because it, and the only difference is, it's an A record on Google on the 8.8.8.8, .8 that becomes an A record, but it's like a dynamic one. It's temporary, it's cached. That doesn't mean upstream DNS servers are not DNS servers. They are, because they will act as DNS servers. So our Wi-Fi router does this similarly, just like the upstreams. It caches information from the second level name servers, and it can do one of two things when a client on your LAN asks. It can either be a DNS server here and give you the address of example.com because it cached it from the upstreams, but we can also tell it to use second level domain servers if we want, but then, I mean, we would have to tell it each um, zone we want to reach. It wouldn't be feasible. That's why we have upstreams that kind of aggregate all of the records together as clients ask for them. All right. And it also takes loads off it, off individual name servers up here and up here at the top level domains. But um, there's another thing the Wi-Fi router can do um, when it's asked if it doesn't have this in its cache because it only keeps this in its cache for a certain time. The, the red arrow is uh, signifying a cache miss here. And then it would send upstream to ask. But if like OpenDNS didn't have example.com at the moment, it likely will because a lot of people use all of these upstream DNS servers all the time. Um, it would query the second level name server for example.com. So this one here. And then it would get that result and then send it back down. Then the Wi-Fi router would cache it just like the upstream server of OpenDNS would cache it. Also, it speeds up this process of querying for DNS. Now, another important thing to understand um, is split DNS. And what split DNS is, is essentially um, overriding or giving a different answer for a domain name versus the real IP address of it. Now, there's two places this is used, and it's very important to understand both of them. The first place it's used is if it can be used uh, home-wise, and it can be used on... a uh, a business scale, enterprise scale. We can have a server on our LAN, and if you're inside, we can give you the local IP address. That's a form of split DNS. But if you're outside on the WAN of that network, we can give you the public address. That's a form of split DNS. There's another form of split DNS, though, that the upstream DNS servers do. And what this is, is blacklisting, essentially sinkholing the traffic. It's still a uh, lookup. It's still DNS query. But like, for instance, if I if a client on the, on the LAN queries malware.net, the upstream server, let's say Google this time, uh, will reply back malware.net is at 127.001. So... In that way, you won't be able to access the site. It's blacklisted. All right, there's ways around this using different DNS servers, but um, I'm just saying that there's multiple ways to, to do that. This is how it ties together, though. You don't usually access the root name servers directly, and you don't usually access TLD servers directly. 
or even uh, second level domains unless you're an administrator of one. So then this is where companies host their own domain names. All right, like example.com or mine, uh, tkmonroe.com is hosted by Namecheap. They have a second level domain server for my zone, TK Monroe, and then it's under the tld.com. And then that manages it in that way. But uh, with that, that's kind of how we got this going on. Now, we're going to round this out with a demo, and I think it will make a lot more sense than just these slides. All right, so now we're going to get into the demo. Now, I'm on uh, Windows, and I'm going to use NSLOOKUP for this purpose. If you're on Linux or BSD, just use DIG. So we're going to just type NSLOOKUP. And to start, we're going to do server 198. 4104. The reason is because that's a root name server. I want to show you. If I type Google, I'm going to get an answer, but the only answer I'm going to get is pointing to other name servers. So this is the root name servers telling me to query the top level domain servers because the only thing the root name servers took out of that query for google.com is the com part and the only thing they know about com is what servers manage com they don't know any zones under com they, they don't know about google so that's how they they have that, that that's why they give me that answer so now let's change our dns server Let's go to Google. And we'll do try that again. There we go. Now, I went from a root name server to a second level domain server. And now I asked for Google because the root name server pointed me to the name server responsible for the com zone. And now this com zone, this top level domain name server is pointing me to this set to the second level domain server that's responsible for google.com in this case google manages their own so you have ns2.google.com ns1.google.com ns3.google.com and so on but this is what you do if you actually maintain your own dns servers you create a second level domain server a second level domain server and you would manage this. So if I wanted to manage uh, my website, I would create one that manages TK Monroe, and then that's it. So tkmonroe.com, but then a com server on the internet would point to my server. All right, so this would happen. The problem is, DNS is you have to have uptime almost 100% of the time. It's, it's a very hard server to manage. It's more difficult than a web server and things of that nature. But um, here, though, if we go to server ns2google.com, oops, I'm, I apologize. You actually have to go to the IP address, remember, because you'll get, that, get a chicken and egg problem otherwise. And now we go to Google. We find out that they know about Google. Google. But if I search for my website... See, they, they don't know about my website. Why is that? Because they don't manage that zone. That's a different zone entirely. So they're not going to accept that query. It says query refused. Now, though, down through there from the second level domains, let's go to my local DNS server on my network. So now if I query Google... This DNS server on my local network, which is unbound, is going to do this same process. It's going to go up through the upstream. If the upstreams don't have it, it's going to go to the second level, and so on. So if I hit here, it comes right back, and there is Google. Now, I've also set up split DNS to show you. On my LAN, if I query my LAN DNS server, for example.com, I've, I've bypassed it and put in loopback. So... That, that's just something I did only on my LAN. But if I go to an upstream DNS server, remember, 
and then I look for example.com, they're going to go to the second level servers for example.com and have that IP for me. So that's how, you, one, how you can get around split DNS if it's blocking something, is use a different name server. But um, how that split DNS works, it's kind of funny. If I ping Google, example, uh, I ping my loopback address if I, if I ping there, just like that. So anyway, as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you for viewing and have a very nice day.